cool. So last thing we want to talk about sleep efficiency. So inside Superhumans United, we have the importance of sleep, which is everything you could possibly want to know about sleep. I'm going to talk about some basics here today. Um, why is sleep important? Well, basically every physiological, biological, and psychological function depends on it. Sleep is where sleep is what facilitates the waking life. Because when you think about it, during our waking life, it is just all systems go. There's a lot of input, a lot of stressors. We're eating food. We're moving. We're basically using and wearing out the body. And sleep is when you're recovering the body and you're recovering your mind. So it's absolutely crucial. Sleep is actually the only time that the body restocks its immune system. Um, this is when the body actually fights malignancy and infection and sicknesses. Notice like when you're really sick, like how much are you sleeping? Like how tired are you? And you knock out. And then when you wake up from uh, from that really knocked out sleep during being sick, you feel a little bit better. It's the only time the body's really healing itself because during our waking life, it is all systems go. Um, this is also when we reset our metabolic state, which is why fasting insulin and fasting glucose are such good measures of metabolic health. Um, it modulates the microbiome because when I'm sleeping, hopefully, theoretically, you're not eating. I used to have a big problem with sleep eating. Um, I still have a temptation for I'll wake up in the middle of the night and just want to go grab something for some reason. But um, but ideally, you know, when you're sleeping, you're not having that food input. And so the microbiome can calm down and remodulate itself. And then also sleep is when you have your most uh, your, your strongest cardiovascular health, because it's when your pulse rate should be the lowest and your blood pressure should be the lowest. Right. And we all know that diet and exercise are very important, but sleep facilitates life. And sleep is when the immune system reboots itself and rebuilds itself. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about the autonomic nervous system. All right. So and this is just making a plug for being restful as often as possible. So the autonomic nervous system is basically I think most of us have probably heard of fight or flight and rest and digest. Right. I like to call it fight or flight and, and sugar burning or rest, digest, detox and fat burning. And the body is usually going to be dominantly in either one of these modes. OK, um, so fight or flight is when. Like I could be like falling asleep tired right now. And if some guy came in here with a shotgun and held me up, I would I would find the energy to jump out the window, run two miles, climb a wall. Like, I, you know, that kind of a jolt that you get or say you're driving on the highway and you're kind of nodding off. And all of a sudden, like you hit those little bumps or, or you feel like you're going to hit someone like you get this jolt of energy. That's fight or flight. OK, um, but fight or flight is also self-induced sometimes. Like when we have a workout, when we go through something really intense. That's an emergency to the body. One of these Metcons, that 10 minute bike trial, Chandler, am I, am I speaking the truth here? Like that's a self-induced emergency. So when I'm in fight or flight from a physiological perspective, it is almost impossible for me to focus on immune system health versus when I'm in a rest and digest state, everything is calm and relaxed. So I want to pull up some, this is some text from one of my anatomy and physiology books. When we're in a rest and digest state, it promotes calming of the nervous system, a return to regular function, and enhances rest and or digestion. It dilates the blood vessels leading internally and to the GI tract. So if I'm really calm and relaxed, if I have food in my system, it helps me digest food. If I don't have food in my system, all those uh, resources go internally for healing. It stimulates sexual arousal, probably not important with this, but stimulates salivary gland secretion, accel accelerates parasolsis or the movement of um, the bowels. And so a lot of people that have constipation issues are stressed out all the time. And if they learn how to get calm or relaxed, you know, that kind of helps move things along a little bit. Um, mediates digestion of food uh, for absorption of nutrients and allows for natural healing and repair. So that's when we're in a calm and rested and relaxed state. Doesn't mean that we're asleep necessarily. It just means that we're not stressed. Um, now, in a fight or flight state, this corresponds with arousal, energy generation, and inhibits repair, healing, and digestion. Why? Because that's not the priority. When I'm in a fight or flight state, the priority is dealing with the emergency, whatever that is. Um, it diverts blood flow away from the GI tract and away from the internal system to the skeletal muscles and to breathing. Why? Because I'm dealing with this emergency, right? It's not my, my priority is not dealing with what's going on inside me. Um, and then it also dilates the pupils, provides vasodilation so I can see better, my blood flows better, constricts all my intestinal sphincters, all right? This is, again, anatomy and physiology 101 right here, and inhibits peristalsis, all right? So I just want to make a plug for all of it, okay? Having good sleep patterns and then also having a mindfulness practice or a devotion or whatever it is to you, something that allows you to relax and calm down, okay? 
So to improve sleep duration and quality, there's a few things I wanna highlight here. Again, we have a really, really awesome uh, course inside of Superhumans United. And the first thing is consistency. We need consistency with bedtime and rise time most days. Why am I saying that? Because we cannot have, and we're talking about setting a, uh, a circadian rhythm for your own body. We cannot have five days a week where we have one sleep schedule and we go to bed at a certain time, get up a certain time. And then on the weekends, we sleep in until noon and, and go to bed at a different time. There's no consistency there. In order for me to develop an internal circadian rhythm, I have to train my body. And if I have three out of seven days, that's like half my days that I'm not getting that consistency. Uh, we talk about this in the sleep program, but you can set your own circadian rhythm and I think what's ideal is that you set that and it's slightly aligned with the with the daylight and, and nighttime. So for instance, my circadian rhythm makes me get up at 3.30 every single morning no matter what. Like I try to sleep in, the best I can do is just lay there till four, four o'clock in the morning or something like that. But 3.30 hits and I don't care if I've been up all night or not, like my, my circadian rhythms are so in sync that I, it is my time to get up and I get tired every evening around 7 p.m. I don't care how hard I try to stay up and watch a movie or something, like I just can't do it. So I have set my own circadian rhythm with consistency of schedule, but then also I have the benefit of actually being awake during the day and then being asleep during the night, right? So the sun exposure and that stuff is very important. So the second thing we wanna do is mimic the day during the day. So we want to ideally be awake during the day and experiencing brightness during the day and getting outside, going on walks, taking little breaks. Um, we need about 30 minutes of cumulative brightness to set circadian rhythms in a positive direction. And then during the evening, we want to mimic the night. So that means we want to sleep during the night. We want our rooms to be dim, dark and cool to mimic being outside. Because when you think about it, if I was out in, in nature, you know, the sun goes down it gets cooler, significantly cooler, and that coolness is a signal to my body that it's time to go to sleep. So if my room is cool, then that's a signal to my body to go to sleep, and if things are dark, that's a signal for my body to go to sleep, all right? So those are the few things, just a quick overview that you can do to improve your sleep. Um, so I'm gonna address some very important things because I know a lot of us here are fitness fanatics, okay? Working out when you feel sick is a really bad idea, okay? I got pe we got people that come in here and part of what we do during this cold and flu season, we're trying to discourage people from coming in when we know they're sick. We can see it, we can hear it, and they're blowing their nose and they're coughing and they can see it in their face. I don't know what the thought process is there. First of all, I understand, we understand what it feels like to miss workouts, right? You feel like you're losing something. You feel like you're missing out on something, but you're not. Man, I've taken a month off from working out and I just did like little PVC movements. I've taken weeks off at a time. Colby's taken weeks off at a time. You get better actually, all right? You can still walk and, and do things minimally, but taking a couple of days or a few days off because you're sick is not, you're not going to lose anything. But some people come in here and they feel like they have to push through a sickness. I've even heard some people say, when I get sick or I feel like I'm getting sick, then I just sweat it out. Well, okay, let's just say that you believe that. You're contaminating other people here, all right? This is what's spreading these sicknesses. So when you feel sick, when you feel the onset of a sickness, that little scratch in the back of your throat, that's when you're most contagious. And so at that point, I would just stay home, rest. And if you rest right then, the chances that you have, uh, that you get really debilitated by it are going to be slim to none. Versus if you push through, think about it. Working out is stressing out your immune system. It's breaking it down. So that's not going to help you at all. Um, resting at the first sign of sickness is the smartest thing that you can do. Think of it as taking a necessary break because I'm sure we've probably heard from our coaches, you need to take some time off. You need to take a break. Well, a sickness is a forced break and you can look at it as a very good thing. You can still do some solitary walks, um, keep some activity, work on yourself internally, read some books and stuff like that. Okay.